Reactor is the new master of face swapping. Hello my friends, how are you doing? You might remember my time as an AI gangster hip hop rapper. So I think a little face swapping rap is in order. So I told them, You might face it, Mace, but I still put my face in any place because I'm the base of the grace. I always win my race. Never underestimate when I create. Let's get started. Also, I have another fantastic surprise for my Patreon supporters and YouTube members at the end of this video. All right, all right, all right. So one thing that is very important here is that you have Visual Studio 22 installed. You can download here the free community version. And then inside of there, when you start the installer, you might want to look for the Visual Studio Community 22 version and then also the Visual Studio Build 2. 22 version. If you already have installed that, type into your search on Windows the Visual Studio installer. This will open up this window and do an update of that version. It's really important so everything works for you. The installer window for you is going to look different with different kinds of options in there. So just look for these two options and everything should be fine. Then you want to go to the GitHub page of the Reactor extension and when you scroll down here. It also tells you here about the Visual Studio version and so on, like I told you. And then you can go to the extensions tab inside of Automatic 11.11 and enter this URL here. Now, this might not always work for you. So I also want to show you an alternative way to do that. So still copy this web address here. That's really important. And then alternatively, you can go into your automatic 1111 folder in there into the extensions folder. And then you go up here to the address bar and type CMD, hit enter. This opens the command window and there you type git clone and the web address hit enter and this is going to download the things you need. Now for me there was another problem and that is that the install inside of Automatic 11.11 or the GitHub clone install I just showed you did both not create the inside face folder inside of the Automatic 11.11 folder inside of the models folder and this is needed for the install to work because in there it's going to download several models that are needed for the creation. So once that is done, simply start your web UI user.bat and let everything run through. In case things still don't really work for you, you might want to close down Automatic 11.11 and then delete the Venth folder and then start it again with the web UI user.bat file. After that, it's going to take quite a while to do the installing because it's downloading again a lot of stuff and rebuilding a lot of stuff. But finally, Automatic 11.11 should run smoother and also Reactor should work. You can check in the CMD. When you open up Automatic 11.11, you can actually check here in the command window if Reactor is working. So here it should say Reactor status running and also no other error messages concerning the reactor status. There is also a ConfUI reactor node, but I have to admit I couldn't get that to work until now, so I have to show you that another time. So let's go inside of Automatic 11.11. Again, for the installing, if you want to install it inside of Automatic 11.11, you go here to the extensions tab to install from URL, Put the URL here, hit install and then restart Automatic 11.11 again. Now let's talk about how this works for the rendering. In text to image, you do everything as usual as you want to. I would suggest that you're using here a high res fix to have a higher resolution of the image. And then when you scroll down here, you can see you have here a new area for reactor. And then down here, you want to load an image and you also want to enable that. And below that, you can see there's multiple choices for the number of the faces. For example, if you have already rendered an image and it has multiple faces in there, it starts from zero and then goes on one, two, three, four, five from left to right. So you can check out which kind of face should 
this face be applied to. And then below that, you also have a restore face where you can choose between code former and GFP again. And over here, you have the value. Now, make sure to see down here for the code former weight, it says that one is the minimum effect. So when you push this all the way, this is actually the minimum effect and zero is going to be the maximum effect. So you want to experiment with that a little bit. After that, everything should run as expected for you. You can see now down here from text to image, my face has been applied to that character here. And again, you might want to check inside of your command window if everything is working correct. You see here the status of what is happening. This is also going to judge the faces that are put into the image and that are from the AI image so that they can match better together. And then it's rendering the face onto the AI image. So that is one way you can do that, but you can also go the route of image to image. Now here, I want to show you two different versions. One is using image to image. So you simply load the image you have created before. I would suggest down here to click on this little triangle so that you have the same kind of resolution. To not change anything about the image, you might want to set the noise strength to zero so that the image stays the same, only the face is going to be replaced. However, if you decide to put the denoise strength higher, you can have the benefit that, for example, if you don't like the face expression, you can say smiling and then this will render the face again as smiling. And afterwards, it would put the character as smiling onto the face. So there you have a little bit more flexibility with all of that. The rest of the process is the same. You go down to reactor here, you load the image of the face, you enable that and you do the settings down here as you choose them to do. As you can see, we also have a very nice result from that. Now here is another thing you can do and this will save a little bit on GPU time. So if you have a slower computer, try this. Instead of sending the image to image to image, you send it to in painting and then you simply mask out the head and a little bit the area around the head also like that. So basically what you want to replace, you go down here, you set it to only mask, of course. And then here for the resolution, you can set a lower resolution, either 512 by 512 or 768 by 768. Or if you go with SDXL, you can also go with 1024 by 1024. I have to say I have not tested this with SDXL. Then again, you go down here, you enable that, you load the image, you make the settings down here if you want to. And now the huge benefit is that this is only rendering the face and then replacing the face and the image without rendering the rest of the image. So you save some time on that process. The quality between these three methods is basically the same, although I have to say that I like the quality of text to image the best because I feel like it is the sharpest and it also brings out the most details. So maybe go with text to image unless you want to replace something in an old image or in a photo you have. Also, I have another fantastic method for you. This is not using any kind of extension. It's just using the face from the photo 100% as it is. You can check that method out here. Of course, also there's the question, why not use Roop? And also, why not use a LoRa? You can, of course, use a LoRa, but you have to train that while this works with a single image. So why not use Roop for that? Well, the developer of Roop is going in a different direction with his project. So Roop is no longer going to be updated as far as I know. And also, if you're a ConfUI user, there isn't even Roop in there. So this is a good method to do face swapping for that. And here, my friends, is the surprise. So you asked me, couldn't I build this kind of gradient input that I showed you in Automatic 1111 inside of ConfUI? And of course, I built that for you. So check this out. This is the input here. We are doing a first case sampling here. Looks already pretty amazing. Then we are doing a latent upscale by two. And we get, of course, a much higher quality. You can already stop here if you want to. But I also do then a phase detailer and I am doing an upscale and, of course, sharpening as always. And then look at this 
fantastic quality you get out of my workflow. Really amazing. Look at that background. Everything here is really cool. But of course, my friends, the question is why stop there when you can go even further? So here is even another build. I thought if you can do it with a gradient, why not do it with a simple color sketch? So check this out. This is my very simple input. I have here some of these neon ads and then I have down here a little bit of a reflection, some very crude buildings. You can do this in any kind of painting software and a silhouette down here of a character. Now we are using this as an input for a first case sampler. We do the upscale by two and then into a second case sampler. So look at that. That. This is the first quality. It's not that great. But this, my friends, is the second quality already a lot better. But here comes the secret magic sauce. What I'm doing here is I'm doing a face detailer. Then I'm doing upscaling and sharpening. And then I'm doing another face detailer on the high resolution version of that image. And now check out the quality we get from this. Ooh la la. Very nice details, everything in here, the reflections on the ground. Look at the details, the jacket, the backpack. Look at this really beautiful sign here with these Chinese letters here. Very, very nice, very detailed, super high resolution. And my friends, the best of it all is this is rendered with a 1.5 model ref animated. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. The downloads will be in the YouTube membership section and on my Patreon for you to download. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.